pictures. You have to take some good pictures. Um, that means no standing over your work. So you have to stand in a direction where you're not casting a shadow over your artwork. Do not take a picture of your work in dim light or a room with the lights turned off so there's barely, I'm, I'm like barely able to see your work. Some of your um, grayscales taken in the dark with the light from your phone, it was so hard <laughs> to make out the different values. So stuff like that. Please be uh, careful and take a little bit of time to take a really nice photo with your cell phone camera of your work. Um, and if you need to have me post a uh, helpful video, I found a wonderful video on YouTube. I will post that. And it gives you some tips on how to use your cell phone in particular to take pictures of your student artwork. And I will post that for everybody in the um, mat under materials. So some of you needed help with that. Others took beautiful pictures. So um, not everybody did the same with their photo taking. So take a picture like you really care about that item, like it, it was just some spectacular thing. You want everything to be perfect. That's just, that's the care that you should take when you are taking photos of your artwork. All right, let's, let's see who's here. And then I'm going to demo uh, just how to put varnish on, what kind of texture varnish. All right. So this is the um, finished, oh, I think I need one more light. So this is the finished pot. Um, so I mixed brown with my black acrylic paint and I kind of put it into these little crevices, um, these little, little lines. I made sure that they kind of got hit by that darker color. And then with a very soft, um, rag I just wiped off the extra off of the top of the ridges because I didn't want that to be as dark I just want it to be dark and kind of in the crevices a little bit and I even lightened that up I really wanted it to be in the lines mostly so I have that I have that tray again um, because I'm going to be working with an acrylic base so I have that I'm just going to get a, a cup of water now, this is what I also found, and I'm gonna use that. Um, I, I went to Hobby Lobby, and this is matte, so it's non-shiny. In cultural pottery in a lot of countries that don't glaze their pottery, um, which means putting that really glossy, shiny, glassy coating, um, glazing requires you to fire your pot one more time, and they don't, you know, they don't do that. So they leave their pots fired and that is called a bisque firing and that permanently transforms the clay into ceramic material. That's this process called vitrification. So when you pour water on it, it doesn't turn back into clay. If you had clay and you made a project out of it and then you didn't fire it in a special machine called a kiln, which can go up to 2000 plus t uh, degrees, and you've got water on it and you, or you let it soak in water, it will melt completely down back into the original clay form. So no chemical reaction has occurred if you do not fire your clay. This is salt dough. There's really no chemical reaction that's occurred. If I was to soak this in a bucket of water, it would just turn to mush again. Um, it would be pretty ugly. <laughs> so the only thing holding it together is just the air drying process. So I'm gonna put some of this varnish here. Everything, the color, the painting, the varnishing is optional. Oh, hold on. Yes. Technically, we really didn't need to do coils when we mold it because you just smooth the outside of it. So we could have just did a smooth pot. If you are experienced and you want to approach it like a slab pot, Ashley, did you have Mr. Marchetti before? No. Because what you're describing is kind of working, well, it's more like a pinch pot where you're actually just taking the clay and pressing it into the side of the bowl. Is that what you're talking about? Um, yeah. 
with the coils, if it's the same exact thickness as what you were going to put as just the slab pieces, mm -hmm. then you could have just did that instead of doing the coils. Well, I think... Oh, okay. Go ahead. Because what? Because, like, with the coils, mm -hmm. I'm going to put a, 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 another coat around it so you don't see the coils so it's a smooth surface. And you did the same exact thing. So mm -hmm. I just didn't, I don't understand why we have to do coils if we could have just did the smooth surface. I don't want people to make their pots too thin. Because if you press it in, um, some people can't gauge just how thick or thin different parts of their walls will be, where if you roll out a coil that's half an inch thick, at least I think it most people will have it be half an inch thick all the way around. You, you, you see what I'm saying? I think it'll kind of give them a little bit more of chance that the, the walls will be the same thickness. Whereas if you just kind of press the clay up against the, the bowl, there may be thin parts, they, there may be thick parts. I know what you're saying. It does, it also depends on your skill. Like, are you good at kind of gauging, like putting your hand in and kind of figuring out how thick the wall is in different parts and keeping it uniform? I feel like for someone who's never touched any kind of clay, that might be a little tricky. So, and also building this way is a legitimate way you can we have you know people have built the coils and then smoothed it over um it's just also it's just a way of building up that's all but just make sure um that the walls you know that walls stand up and, and nothing buckles under the weight of um the layers on top okay as long as it stays stable you're good so i have this and I'm just gonna brush it on. Um, you don't need to, you know, you don't need to add any water to it unless it gets kind of dry. Uh, and it says it dries pretty quickly in 10 minutes because it is um, an acrylic paint, outdoor, indoor. And I just found this kind of in the craft section. It's not really even in the art section. It's for making kind of like little decorative items or painting uh, little wood kits and stuff like that. It's not really for fine art. It's for like home decor crafts. So it's a milky liquid. It looks just kind of like a thicker milk or Elmer's glue. That's what it looks like, Elmer's glue. And you just brush it on. And what's good is you just clean it up with uh, soap and water. This is priced at $10, but I used the coupon at uh, online coupon. It was like 40% off, so I got it for six bucks. So, but it's optional. I'm trying to practice, you know, more healthy art practices, so I'm not spraying anything. I did have a matte spray, but I'm avoiding that and, you know, standing outside, getting it blown all over me when the wind changes direction and just, it's really, really toxic. Um, I think this would be a better alternative because it's not sprayed in the air. Do not use warm water or hot water because that might soften up the paint that you already put down. So always use cold water. You can use some warm water when you're washing out your brush at the end, but that's about it. All right, I'm just picking up some of this varnish. It will go on milky, but don't panic. It's kind of like El um, Elmer's glue in that it will dry perfectly. Uh, clear and the reason I'm bothering to do this is just um, Just to protect it give it a little bit of water proofing in case somebody spills something on it And it's just a protective coat Miss Han. Yes We spray the varnish after putting it in the oven The varnish is the very last step you don't want to um, do that when you're going to put it back in the oven. This would be after you're done everything to your pot that you want to do. But do the spraying at the end and do it outside with a mask on. At this point, everybody owns a mask, right? <laughs> put that mask on. And if you uh, even own one of those masks that have like, a, like one that people in shops use with the little ventilator things, the little filters. That's what I mean, the little filters like that are on each side. That's even better. Um, but just, just be careful and make sure it's not too windy 
so it blows all over your clothes. But this is a safe bet. What I'm showing you here is um, probably the safest, less toxic alternative, which um, may not go on as smoothly as a spray, but it's healthier for you. So that's that. And I'm just making sure that if there is any of this that's just kind of pooling around in large amounts that I'm just kind of spreading that evenly. So there's no like buildup, but it does, isn't, doesn't really matter because it's going to dry clear. And what it'll look like is um, almost like a layer, like a waxy layer, because it's not going to be um, super shiny. It'll just kind of look a little bit waxy. Put maybe two coats on here. Maybe having that paper towel under it was not a good idea because now we got little pieces of paper towel stuck to it. And by the time you look at this tomorrow, um, there should be no milky white uh, color on it. It should be completely clear. So I didn't get near the base, but do not put any right on the base, which is going to be sitting on your table, or it might get glued to your table. Okay, just just anywhere but that very bottom area that makes contact with the, with the table. Um, I just want you to get some experience working and building by hand a three-dimensional piece. And what's what better to create texture than something that you can touch and you can actually hold, right? So that's why I went in that direction. But you do have an alternative if it doesn't work out. If you even attempt it and it doesn't turn out exactly you know, the way, I'm still going to give you a very generous grade. So I'll make a promise with you guys. If you attempt it and if it looks, you know, it looks like, you know, you, you finished the piece, I will give you a minimum of um, 85 points, okay? I'm being very generous here, but you must. <laughs> You must post the photograph of the pot that you were going for to try, you know, that you were inspired by. It doesn't have to be exactly like it, but I kind of want to see what your goal was that you had in mind, okay? So I will promise you that. Um, and then if you do the paper, it's still possible to do very well with just the paper too. So those, those are your options. Do your very best at doing your projects. That's that's all I have to say about that. Do them. They don't have to be perfect because nobody is perfect. Absolutely no one is perfect. Um, and projects are not perfect, okay? Uh, but I want you to learn because that's how you, you learn. If things don't work out, you learn from your mistakes too. Um, so this is for real. The virtual situation may go on for a while, you know? It, if it goes on until the spring, and I'm not saying it is, I would not be surprised. Uh, make sure that you take uh, really good photography. Um, make sure your shadow's not in the way to keep put the light on. And also, uh, make sure that your, your cell phone is always parallel. You know, if the photography, if the, if the, if the drawing is on the wall like this, Make sure that your camera is not like this or like this. Make or And also make sure that your work is parallel, not sitting on the ground like this. And then, do you know how many photographs where I saw the top of your picture was this narrow and then the bottom, as it was coming towards you, was laying on the desk, was really wide. So if you're gonna take it, hover that cell phone right over um, and, and stand, hover over the piece so that you have a perfectly rectangular picture, but make sure to just think about the quality of your picture. So that's all I wanted to demonstrate today. Um, we don't have a lot of time. So um, period six, I will see you tomorrow. Um, just tomorrow will just be a work day. Um, it's a half day schedule again, and then parent conferences. All right, I'll see you guys.